morning, everybody. Uh, thank you all for coming and welcome to Volker Steven Highway's uh, Northeast Anthony Henday Maintenance Shop. I have the distinct honor today of uh, introducing our Minister of Transportation and Economic Corridors, Devin Dreeshen, who has a very important announcement for us today. So I'm going to turn the mic over to the Minister. Well, thank you very much, Scott, and uh, also thank you for controlling the weather. You've actually stopped the rain for a few minutes, so that's great. Uh, no, just great, great to be here today, and, and thank you again. Um, a very exciting announcement here for the province of Alberta in protecting our roadside workers across the province. So regardless if it's a police officer or an ambulance, uh, drivers or paramedics or roadside workers or tow truck drivers, we want to make sure that the rules are the same on the road. So as an Alberta driver, when you are going near anybody that's working on the side of the road with flashing lights, there's, there's two things you need to remember. You have to slow down to 60 kilometers if you're in the lane right beside where the workers are doing their job or move over to the left lane in when safe to do so. So that's the, the big public relations campaign that we're launching here today. And these rules will actually be in effect on September 1st. So the Department of Transportation Economic Corridors is rolling out a communications plan, a public relations engagement to make sure that Albertans know of these rule changes coming, to in, coming into effect on September 1st. And really, at the end of the day, we just want to make sure that the, the brave men and women, the, the folks that serve us as Albertans by de dealing with issues on the road, that they can go home safely at the end of the day because they serve Albertans and we want to make sure that we're actually we're looking out for them as well. So with, uh, we've actually had the Alberta Motor Association, the Alberta Road Builders and Heavy Construction Associations, and Highway Maintenance Contractors been involved in the engagement and the building of this announcement here today. And uh, as I stated, un unfortunately, uh, between 2014 and 2018, there's actually been over 2,000 injuries uh, involving roadside workers in the province of Alberta, which is obviously a, a staggering number. And we want to do everything we can to try to get that number to, to zero. And we think that, that this announcement and rolling this out in a, in a way that Albertans understand the, the new rule changes on September 1st will go a long way of making sure that Alberta roadside workers can go home safely at the end of the day. So that's, uh, that's the announcement. We'll, you'll see uh, more advertising, as I mentioned, uh, leading up to September 1st. This is just the launch of this public engagement campaign. And uh, with that, I'm happy to turn things over to Ron Glenn, uh, CEO of Alberta Road Builders and Heavy Construction Association. Thanks, thanks everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Dreeshen, for uh, for bringing this uh, bringing this policy that was uh, part of uh, Bill Five through the legislature, and bringing it to fruition and uh, providing these new rules for our workers. Uh, I represent the uh, Alberta Road Builders Heavy Construction Association. We have over 700 companies that uh, build and maintain your highways, and uh, we have over 50,000 workers in our industry. Uh, in highway maintenance, there's uh, between 14 and 1,600 uh, workers that are out there keeping the highways safe uh, of debris and fixing the guardrails and plowing snow and ice control in the wintertime. They're keeping the roads safe for you. And uh, the most dangerous part of uh, highway construction and maintenance is actually working around traffic. And so while our workers are out there keeping the roads safe for you, our message to drivers is your... Uh, the, the lives of our workers are literally in your hands. So you should slow down when you see the flashing lights and you see the workers by the side of the highway. You should, and now you must, because that's going to be the law. And so we're very appreciative of, uh, of the government of Alberta for, for making this rule change. And uh, we look forward to uh, uh, an enforcement campaign that, uh, that accompanies the, uh, the new law and that we reduce those, uh, those numbers of uh, incidents and injuries uh, on our highways. So help us to make those roads safe for you. Thanks. And now uh, Scott Emerson from uh, Volker is going to finish up today. Uh, thanks, Ron. Uh, today's announcement is, is the culmination of the hard work of an awful lot of people, both in industry and in government. I just wanted to maybe recognize a few of those partnerships today, if I could. Uh, 
First off, our industry has worked very collaboratively with Alberta Transportation and Economic Corridors since 1996 when highway maintenance was privatized. And the government's commitment to the safety of our workforce, the safety of traveling Albertans is exceptional. Uh, I want to thank Minister Drieschen for and his staff for taking up this cause, for pushing this important legislation. By including roadside workers in this legislation, we are making sure that everybody gets a chance to go home safely every day. So thank you to you and your staff. Uh, second, I want to acknowledge the Highway Maintenance Com Safety Committee. Um, this is a group of people, they are safety professionals from across our profession, along with representatives from government. And it is this group that uh, really took the initiative some years ago to make this legislation happen. Uh, their chair today, uh, Warren Stasiak, is here. Warren, give everybody a little wave. Uh, but this entire group has really advocated hard. And uh, to them, I appreciate all their hard work and dedication to this. You're a big part of why we're here today. Uh, partnering on industry-led events is, is always a privilege for Volcker. Um, and this is definitely an industry event. We have uh, uh, M members from MCON and CarMax here today who have also been big supporters of this legislation, as have all the other industry participants. Um, I want to acknowledge those companies because they are truly a collaborative and cooperative group, especially when things like safety are at issue. So thank you to our industry partners. Lastly, I want to thank our Northeast Anthony Hende team who put together a great backdrop today. These folks work diligently 24 hours a day to maintain a very busy section of the Northeast Anthony Hende Drive. Helen Brown is our contract manager who hates the spotlight, but I'm going to make her wave anyway. Um, they are part of, of a Volker team of about 350 employees uh, that do very similar work across the province, as do CarMax, MCON, and the rest of our industry partners. Uh, Volker maintains about 18,500 lane kilometers of highway in the province uh, using these 350 employees, and that's just 30% of the road network. So the amount of people that are out there on the network in harm's way every day making our roads safe for the public is extensive, and as Ron mentioned, we implore that you take great care as, as a public when you're passing our workers because we want you and we want them to all go home safely. So thank you very much for attending today, and uh, we will turn it over to, I think, some questions. Okay, so with that, we're going to have time for some questions from the media. So we're going to start with uh, anyone on the floor here today. So please uh, just line up at the mic. And we'll do one question, one follow-up. Uh, hi, yeah, it's Jeremy Thompson, the CTV News. Um, Minister, just wondering, can you remind us, what is the status quo? You know, what is this being changed from and, and why? Sure, so the, the current rule a certain amount of roadside workers, uh, roadside workers actually aren't involved in the, the current rules. So right now, if uh, you, you as a driver, you have to say it, who is on the side of the road and what are they doing? Are they a roadside maintenance worker? Are they a tow truck driver? Are they an ambulance? Are they and while you're driving 110 down Highway 2? So the, this rule change will make it all the same. So regardless of the color of flashing light, regardless of who is actually working on the side of the road, if, if you're a driver on an Alberta highway and you see flashing lights, the rules are the same. So you don't have to make that delineation of who is protected and who is not protected. Obviously, Albertans, we're, we're all equals, so we should have the same protection of our roadside workers. And so whether it's a policeman or a maintenance worker, it'll now be the, the same rule. So that's the distinction that we're making here today is it's, it's going to be the same for everybody as long as there's flashing lights on the side of the road. And wasn't the original plan to, to have it 60, like both lanes passing? And, and so I guess why the decision, uh, and you know, if I'm wrong, <laughs> let me know, but why the decision to only have you know, the close lane go down to 60, uh, otherwise you know, move to the, to the inside lane? So it was, it was through just consultations with, uh, with Albertans. Uh, if you can imagine leaving Edmonton, driving south towards Calgary, there's about five lanes on Highway 2. And right now, and there's a curve as you're going closer to Leduc, if there's a roadside worker or a police pulling someone over on the side of the road on the right-hand side, 
and there's two or three semis between you and that roadside worker, how is everybody in five lanes going to magically slow down to 60 kilometers an hour while you're passing that roadside worker? So a common sense change of if you are right beside the workers on the side of the road, you're going 60 kilometers an hour or whatever the posted speed limit is if it's lower. But in this case, everybody else can be able to go 110 in lane two, three, four, and five on Highway 2. But right beside where the workers are working, they'll go down to 60 kilometers. Like most, like most of Highway 2, of, of the QE2 is, is two lanes both ways, right? So I guess why not make an exception for, like if you're going to make an exception, make an exception for the areas where it's five lanes wide and, and just be as safe as possible where it's the majority of, of two lanes wide kind of thing. We want it to be simple. So we want to make sure that the rules are the same. And again, you don't have to say, is this late at night? Is this three lanes? Is this four lanes, two lanes, one lane? So we, well, one lane, I guess would be easy. But we, we want to make sure it's, it's simple and easy. So as I mentioned before, whether it's blue lights, red lights, yellow lights, amber lights, if you see workers working on the side of the road, slow down to 60 or move over. Minister, I can appreciate, sorry, Sarah Ryan, Global News. I can appreciate how everyone here being added to the slow down or move over would be beneficial to them for sure, but this is a clawback from what the previous government had was going to be in effect in March, and we were told, tow truck drivers were told, first responders were told that it was going to be slow down to 60 across all lanes for their safety. You essentially told Jeremy that you asked drivers what they wanted and drivers didn't want to slow down. So I guess the premise of your question is a clawback. This is actually increasing the safety for hundreds of roadside workers across the province. For so these as, guys, but not for tow truck I, drivers and not for first responders. Sorry, as, as I mentioned before, whether you're a paramedic, a police officer, a road maintenance worker, a tow truck driver, the rules are all the same. Yes, but you have clawed back. The rules already existed for everyone besides these folks. Those rules already existed for tow trucks, for first responders. You did need to slow down to 60 and move over. So again, uh, the, the premise of a claw back, this is actually increasing road safety. So when we... It's a claw back from what was announced in March that the province me. said they were holding to do more edu education on. When we engaged with our roadside worker safety, with the department, to make sure that there is a free flow of traffic, regardless of what's happening on the side of the road, this was the, the best solution that we, that we came up with, to know that it's 60 kilometers an hour, depending on the, whatever the roadside worker or whatever the roadside work is being done on the side of the road, that's the 60 kilometers, and move over to get out of the way so that they can work safely. So again. Tow truck drivers, if they're working underneath a vehicle or a paramedic or a police officer being at the side of a window, we want to make sure that all Albertans are, are treated the same. Absolutely. This doesn't improve safety for them. What feedback have you heard from the tow truck company? Obviously, AMA is clearly missing from this. Other, the um, association representing tow truck drivers is not here. What feedback have you heard from them? I, I guess... <laughs> The, the premise of your question, again, that this doesn't improve safety for them. You just heard from a roadside worker uh, VP that says for the hundreds of workers that they have, this is actually improving safety for them to make sure that the rules are the He's same. He's not a tow truck driver. I'm asking a very specific question about tow truck drivers. To make sure that the rules are the same regardless of a tow truck vehicle, regardless of any roadside maintenance vehicle, to make sure that all Albertan drivers are going to treat whomever is working at the side of the road with the same rules so that there isn't confusion. I, it's not a hard concept. Okay, and we'll now turn over to questions on the line. So, operator, can you please put through the first caller? Thank you, Catherine Grykowski, Alberta Today. Yeah, so as mentioned, Bill 5 was uh, introduced in the spring of last year. What led to the delays? So uh, the, the public engagement, uh, this is something that we're actually rolling out a uh, million and a half dollar campaign that's going to uh, alert all Albertans of these changes coming to, into effect on September 1st. So you'll be seeing it in newspapers, hear it on the radio, making sure that all Albertans understand that the rules are now the same for all roadside workers across the province. And the, the biggest issue when it comes to traffic safety is a disruption or of flow of traffic. So if you're making sure that you now have the same flow of traffic, drivers are going to be reacting in the same manner regardless of what's happening on the side of the road, that's going to make it safer, not just for, for the roadside workers, regardless of their profession, but also for, for Alberta drivers. So we want to make sure that this public engagement campaign sticks and that Alberta drivers can just instinctively react the way that uh, is safe for everybody and for our drivers. 
Okay. So okay. Is, is that flow of traffic? Is that flow of traffic an issue with um, other provinces where they have the the rules for the opposite direction? We we we've, we've seen I'm, studies I'm and stats that'll that show that thing. when you have a disruption of the flow of traffic, so whenever you're decreasing or increasing, that's always the most dangerous uh, situation on a road. So a, a free-flowing, continuous flow of traffic at the same speed is, is the safest. So that's why we want to limit that disruption in my earlier example on, on Highway 2, where you would have five lanes all having to slow down. That, that's an increase or a higher risk of, of accidents to happen in, in five lanes versus just one. Okay, operator, can you put through the next caller, please? Michelle Belfontaine, CBC. Um, yeah, hi, Minister. I wonder if you can uh, tell me a little bit, a bit, bit more about this education campaign. Um, you just indicated it's a one point million dollar campaign. Um, where will people see uh, the ads, for example, like what what platforms? So, so we're hitting it on everything, uh, whether it's digital, newspaper, radio. Um, we want to make sure that all Albertans have a very good understanding of this rule change so that come September 1st, um, A, there's, there's no tickets being issued, but also that we're making sure that um, roadside workers are, are being safe. So you'll see it in, in all, all, uh, all different mediums. So as a follow-up, um, back in March you said that, you know, well not you, but just the government said that they were pausing uh, the rollout because of the uh, a need for a campaign. So why why is the campaign only coming out now? Like we're about three weeks away from the launch of uh, the uh, of the new rules. Uh, I, oh, sorry. Well. Oh, I th I thought you were keep asking a question. Uh, you know, so the the delay. Um, we just wanted to make sure we got this right. This is dealing with with life and death on on roadways. This is there's. There's hundreds of thousands of Alberta drivers that drive on the roads on a daily basis. We wanted to make sure we got this right. And that's why, again, harmonizing the rules to make sure that they're all the same and that there's a great understanding uh, for Albertans on September 1st so we're not seeing disruptions on the roadway. That's, that's why we wanted to take the time to make sure we got it right and, 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 and to educate all Albertans going forward. Okay, operator, can you please put through the next caller? Thank you. Arthur Green, Western Standard. Good day, Minister. Thank you for taking my question. Um, just a quick one. How are we going to enforce this rule? As, as all traffic safety, uh, that's uh, rules. We, we set the rules, and then we have our enforcement friends in, uh, in public safety and emergency preparedness that will do the enforcement. So that will be our, our sheriffs on the road, the RCMP. They will be issuing tickets if someone is not abiding by the rule. If you're going 100 kilometers an hour by a roadside worker uh, working on the side of the road with their lights on, uh, there will be a, a three demerit and I believe a $324 fine. Um, that that'll be a that'll accompany that. And, and just as a follow-up, would like tow truck operators and you know ambulance operators for the license plates of cars that pass by at this speed? Like it seems to me that it'd be it'll be quite hard to enforce if there's no actual law enforcement on scene. Good, good question. Uh, again, we, we would expect there to be the same enforcement that, uh, that is used for, for all, roads, all road um, laws in the province. So again, we'll, we'll have to lean on, and there'll be, a, there'll be an education campaign for our law enforcement officers as well to make sure to, to look out for this when they see a roadside worker working on the side of the road, that obviously this is now the, the law of the land going forward. So there, there'll be an education campaign for our law enforcement folks as well, as there is any time we make uh, changes to, to the laws. Okay, uh, last call for uh, questions on the, on the line. Okay, seeing none. Uh, there are no last, additional questions. No additional questions. Uh, last call for questions on the floor. Just, uh, again, this is Jeremy with CTV. Uh, I just know that, uh, you know, as a driver, it's used quite helpful when uh, someone's doing some work on the side of the road that, you know, there's someone standing out with a sign that says, you know, 60 kind of thing. Are there best practices or requirements or anything like that um, for the folks who are doing the work on the side to sort of help remind drivers what the rules are? That's a great technical question. Scott, do you actually want to... You hire the people that hold on to those signs, so you probably answer better than I could. 
Yeah, I think uh, there's a differentiation between what we're talking about today and a, a construction site, right? So when you're driving through a construction site, there are actually very specific rules, there's very specific tra traffic accommodation strategies that are put in place to address those things. Roadside workers, tow truck drivers, and you, and you see tow truck drivers out there, sometimes they have a partner with a sign. Uh, our roadside workers are at times doing things very, very quickly to clear a hazard and not always having that opportunity. So where the opportunity affords itself, we would certainly take advantage, but it's not always the case where they are clearing debris to make sure that nobody drives over something that would ruin their car, for example, and they're moving on, right? So, so there's some distinction between that. And does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. They're just, they're just not always there long enough to warrant setting up a sign. Correct. All right. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for being here today and have a great rest of your day.